Steam. Steamed what? Steamed hams. Wait, what, what was that? Steamed clams? No. Steamed hams. Okay, well, I, how many steamed hams are we talking? Unlimited. What? Unlimited steamed hams. What in God's green flat earth am I talking about? I'm talking about the Twitch channel called Unlimited Steam. The AI generated parody of the steamed ham sketch from The Simpsons featuring Skinner and Chalmers. After the meteoric rise and uh, fall of the Seinfeld AI stream, Watch Me Forever, there was a big space to take over as the reigning AI sitcom champion. Many came out of the woodwork, but there's one in particular that I think stands above the rest, at least for now, and that's Unlimited Steam. When Watch Me Forever was banned, I peeked into Unlimited Steam and I just thought it was a lazy knockoff. I wasn't impressed, but I kept my eye on it. And I noticed that in like a couple weeks, average viewership went from like 200 to 1,400. I saw that it actually wasn't blowing steam up my ass. <laughs> so I decided to watch it for 40 hours. <laughs> Cause I thought, you know, I don't know, maybe, I had questions I wanted answers to. Is it actually funny? Will I bust some serious hams watching some steamed hams? Unlimited steamed hams. How long will it take me to get bored of it for the novelty to wear off? I mean, surely it can't be entertaining for that long. And lastly, is it worth watching for 40 freaking hours that I will never get back in, uh, in my lifetime? Well, I wanna share with you my journey, what I've seen what I've learned, the friends I've made along the way. Think of this as an unlimited Steam viewer guide as well as a review. Before we dive headfirst into the hams, let me explain how the stream works. Like I said, the whole thing is based on the steamed ham scene from The Simpsons. It's an AI generated parody of that one scene wrapped in some janky CG and text to voice speech. You gotta go watch the clip for full context, but I'll break it down real quick. Principal Skinner has Superintendent Chalmers over for a home cooked meal, but then Skinner's roast burns in the oven. Skinner's trying to come up with a new plan for food quick. He looks out the window and decides he'll replace the burnt roast with Krusty Burgers. Then Chalmers comes into the kitchen, sees the smoke. You get a little sitcom jingle talking about the various hijinks that Skinner and Chalmers get themselves into. Then Skinner in his infinite wisdom plays it off by saying that it's steam from the steamed clams. Runs to get the burgers. Skinner returns with the burgers and Chalmers is like, weren't we having steamed clams? Skinner's like, nah, we were having steamed, steamed hams. hams. See, that's the, uh, that's the namesake of the whole scene. In fact, actually, if you uh, if you search online, there's a lot of you know merchandise memorabilia of the whole steamed ham sort of sort of skit. This is where it comes from. The kitchen catches on fire. The lies continue. Go watch the clip so I don't have to keep explaining. So this whole stream is this one skit encapsulated in a Groundhog's Day loop that just goes on forever and forever. Chalmers arrives. Skinner burns the roast. He gets some crazy idea about how to fix it. Chalmers is suspicious. Skinner keeps up the lies until they both go their separate ways. See, this is one of the areas where the stream is very strong. It has a tight comedic structure to it. A concise setup and punch line that the AI colors differently like a Mad Libs every single time. And an important thing to note though is that the AI isn't generating new content 100% of the time. In the description of the channel, it says that it creates a new three minute episode about once per hour. In that way, it is kind of like watching a normally aired TV show. Reruns until the next new episode. And another thing to note is that it's got its own little sitcom jingle where the AI is dropping some straight bars. Sometimes it's just crazy bars, man. Starts off with a little do, 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 do. Skinner and Chalmers. You know, like uh, like uh, like any good song starts off with. You get these little song jingles every time there's a new episode that comes out. So that's how you know you're there for the premiere. Took me a long time to figure that out. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, what was my experience as I started to tune in for many, many hours? What did I notice? Well, the first couple episodes is all about getting the lay of the land. I needed to get into that steamed flow state. Get a feel for the reoccurring patterns and motifs. I need to get a little taste of those hams. Any given episode will go a little something like this. Skinner welcomes Chalmers to his home. They chat for a little bit, have some banter. Skinner usually reveals what he's cooking for the evening, which often ranges from some exotic dish you've probably never heard of. But Skinner's a man of culture. And then all of a sudden, I'm sorry, gods. I burned the jelly donut. This is usually where things get pretty out of control. Skinner curses himself for neglecting to, to check the oven. Sometimes he repents to God for making the mistake of burning the food. Gods, why have you forsaken me? So then he comes up with the plan. Skinner comes to the window, his place of solace, of refuge, of meditation. His mind chamber where he spins his webs of lies. 
eyes. This is where the magic happens. He looks out the window for something, some material he can replace the burnt food with. He'll talk about collecting apples from trees. He'll talk about propagating plants in his own kitchen and then growing the crop so he can use it in, in his new recipe. He'll talk about constructing a fishing pole so he can go catch a fish in the pond. Sometimes driftwood uh, uh, is an option. Man gets desperate over here, guys. My favorite thing is that sometimes he comes to the window to pray. Praise to God that he would give him an answer, some sort of sign, some sort of inkling of what to do next. But right as Skinner finds his solution, Chalmers bursts in. What are you doing? Skinner's always coming up with elaborate lies. Oh, the food was poisoned. Oh, the supplier gave us the wrong item. Oh, they were out of it at the grocery store. But it doesn't matter how many lies Skinner comes up with, Chalmers always sees through it. Through the steam, you can say. He always does. Because Chalmers is an unstoppable force. He does not let the lies penetrate his mind. Then he'll usually Skinner, notice the fire. The kitchen is on fire. Chalmers is insistent on investigating the fire or calling the fire department. But good old Skinner just brushes it off like it's nothing. Because it is nothing. Coming up with answers like, oh no, Chalmers, that's just volcanic lightning. Volcanic lightning. That's not even any better in, uh, in most cases. What's going on in there? It's filling up with smoke. It's just a result of the parallel universes. Don't worry. Is the kitchen on fire? No, no, it's just shooting stars. They're harmless, really. Just look at them. Quit being a little whiny baby about it. There is a fire in the kitchen. We have to act quickly to put it out. No, 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 it's not a fire. It's only a homunculus. Nothing to worry about at all. Nothing to worry about. Then Chalmers leaves and thanks Skinner for the delicious meal, whatever it was. And then hour after hour goes by. I'm in the tens, I'm in the twenties, I'm in the sixteens. The incredible things I saw, the lies, the deceit, the gaslighting, all of the wonderful, unspeakable, horrible things that I saw. Actually, it's really freaking funny. The stream is, is a great time. It, it's a hoot. Now let's talk about their voices for a sec. Good evening. Superintendent Chalmers. It's so nice to see you again. The whole Mad Libs format can make for some seriously hilarious situations, but sometimes it's just nonsensical and not particularly funny. And I think this is where the stream could falter if it wasn't for their beautiful voices. In my opinion, Unlimited Steam's text-to-speech is one of its best assets. See, Watch Me Forever hey guys, utilizes the familiar Siri-like monotone AI voice. But for Unlimited Steam, I don't know what kind of science witchcraft they're getting into, but it, it's incredible. The speech of the characters has this dynamic inflection with like breath pauses and everything. It's like they took a human head and wired a computer to its vocal cords and GPTs just type in sending words through its disembodied vocal cords. It's an incredible balance between really good and also really janky. What would be a normal line of dialogue is even more funny because you can hear Skinner sigh in frustration or you can hear him fumbling about what to say next. Just, oh, uh, I, I, uh. It really adds that zestiness to dialogue that would otherwise be just monotone all the way through. And on top of that, there are often what I like to call uh, vocal anomalies, where they will go from like screaming something to like a complete, like a inside voice. Then we can add the potatoes and the creamy sauce. This is going to be delicious. And sometimes they make horrific noises, like they're getting possessed by a demon or something. I, uh, Mr. Chalmers. I think these quirks have something to do with the AI trying to translate the text with, into these inflections and, and it like hitches and struggles to make it work sometimes. <laughs> it provides so much of that unexpected spontaneous element that you really want from AI content like this. Even when the Mad Libs can get a little boring, listening to their voices jankily struggle through coherent sentences is just comedic gold to my ears. This sort of janky humor may not hit for everyone, but this is exactly the kind of thing that gets me busting hams. Probably more than I should. There are so many moments of chaotic dialogue delivery that it kind of reminds me of one of my all-time favorite cartoons, Invader Zim. Come on, we're in a hurry here. We have to make it to the observatory by five so we can watch the equinox. The equinox is tonight? Yeah. Uh, 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 mm, uh, mm, yeah. See, this is the kind of vibe I get from the unlimited Steam dialogue. It's like really intense and dramatic, but also also very dumb. <laughs> hey, I mean, if that's not your style of humor though, then why don't you, you know, go listen to people talk normally with clear and concise delivery? Ugh. 
Now, I really struggled with how to convey to you all the funny moments that happens within the stream. It would be impossible to pick out for you every steamed moment, all the BS that Skinner does, the unrelenting force that is Chalmers, every time the characters deliver their lines in some goofy way. So with the help of the Unlimited Steam Reddit community, I crafted this iceberg tier list, just to give you a taste of the wacky shenanigans you can expect in relation to how many hours you've been watching. Now, we got the first tier, which I like to call Groundhog's Day. These are going to be the things you're picking up on in the first hour of stream. You got mispronouncing foreign food. Uh, steamed cock. Uh, leaky. We got wild nouns. Like I said, it's like a Mad Libs. There's all kinds of weird junk that's being thrown in there. You're going to be like, what the heck did he just say the fire was? Oh, no, don't worry. It's just Toadman. The uses of the nouns clearly get out of control, and you'll probably notice that from day one. Sometimes it's very normal, very wholesome. But as you'll see further down the list, a lot of the times it's not so much. We got beans for lunch. Beans for lunch? Beans for lunch? Yes, sir. We got other voices. We got accent changes. Like I mentioned before, you'll notice the voice doing all kinds of weird chameleon shifting in and out of accents and stuff. It's pretty great. See, now the thing is, a lot of you may be dipping into the stream for like one hour. You see some of the things, eh, it's kind of funny, whatever. But if you leave now, you're going to be missing out on some crazy stuff, as we're about to see pretty soon. Then we got the two hour mark. This is when you start to notice that Skinner is a master craftsman of lies. Chalmers will always be prying into Skinner with laser precision. And no matter how insane they may be, Skinner dodges those bullets like freaking Neo. His lies are what's protecting him from unemployment. We got levitation. See, when Chalmers points out that there's a fire in the kitchen, uh, Skinner often likes to use the line, nah, that's not fire. That's levitation. I've been getting pretty good at it lately. How that looks like fire, I, I don't know. But Skinner sure seems to think it does. We got volcanic lightning. Skinner likes to blame the fire on a lot of geologic phenomena. Tsunamis, volcanic lightning, geomagnetic storms are just a couple of the wild things that are happening localized directly in Skinner's kitchen. We got cryptids, Bigfoot, Mothman, Chupacabra, all of them responsible at one point in time for the fire. Say, did you know that my house is under attack by a giant kaiju? kaiju. We got Will O. Wisp. There's no fire. It must be a Will. Oh, the Wisp. The supplier's fault. You know, often when Skinner can't come up with a good enough lie, he just ends up uh, blaming the supplier. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> and then um, I put sexual activity on this list. Uh, you know, he actually doesn't use it as a lie for the fire. Uh, I just didn't really know where else to put this, but it was important to note that Skinner in one episode is, is cooking Chalmers some, some sexual activity. It still doesn't explain why you would replace the gallium odoratum with sexual activities. I thought that it was a nice way to surprise my guests with something new and unexpected. unexpected. Hour three, we got career day. This is when you start to notice how crafty Skinner is. See, he is not just a master craftsman of lies, but of the materials around him. You see, in the window phase of the skin, this is where you see that Skinner wears many hats. Botany, fishing. Skinner sees his backyard ripe for the picking. Any tree, any pond with possible fish in it, he is there and ready to climb out that window, grab those resources, and put it back in that oven. Chalmers wouldn't suspect a thing. See, one thing you didn't know about Skinner is that he is a botanist. In so many episodes, he's always talking about, okay, we gotta take some branches off of that, propagate them here in this kitchen. Then we can grow berries that we can one day use to replace the burnt meal. Maybe I can use the sweet Lola growing in the garden, but how do I get it? Ah, there's only one way. I'll have to go out and pick it myself. Well, I'd better get to it then. We got construction projects. See, sometimes when there's no available food in the backyard, you know, you gotta work on building a, a rig pulley system to get you up into that tree so you can pick some freaking apples. We got research projects, cannibalism. Skinner is not above uh, eating humankind. R.I.P. Jonathan. We got animal theft. See, often when Skinner looks out the window, there are animals present and uh, he will not hesitate to um, steal them so he can milk them, whether they may be a cow or otherwise. You're four hours in. This is when things start to really get unhinged. When you can't find the right materials, when your construction projects fail you, desperation sets in. And sometimes you just have to resort to a higher power. Skinner is not above praying to God or the gods for him to see a sign outside of his window that might tell him about what to use to replace the roast. 
Thank you, O oh gods of fortune, for guiding me and answering my plea. O oh great and powerful gods, please lend me your aid and help me find a way to replace this burnt carbonado with a turban squash. Ah, gods, why are you punishing me? Is this because I was too greedy with the marshmallows and chocolate? We also got the cheese gods, calling upon the gods of cheese to, pro you know, to provide cheese. Well, Professor, I was in the pantry when I heard a loud rumbling and figured it was a sign from the cheese, the cheese gods to switch out the cheese. Now, I'm sure you can understand that. As a faithful servant of cheese, cheese deities, deities, I had to honor the command and make the switch. He prays to Artemis. He praises Hecate. Hecate. Also, spirits of the harvest? Sometimes, Skinner will pray to the spirits of the harvest that they may be able to bless him with something in his backyard that he can harvest so he can revive this meal. Don't forget to pray to the spirits of the harvest, folks. And then we got deals with the devil. A really interesting turn of events that often happens is that Skinner sees that the devil is responsible for ruining his meal. And then like five seconds later, he'll start praying to the devil that he might be able to fix it. <laughs> you know, desperate times call for desperate measures. And you know, the devil's not off limits. <laughs> five hours in, it's what I like to call Groundhog's Day sickness. You're in the loop so many hundreds of times that your humanity starts cracking, disintegrating right before your very eyes. Sanity as you know it, like Skinner's roast, is uh, is getting burned. Steamed, steamed, sorry. We got severe depression, we got self-deprecation. There are moments when Skinner feels the weight and gravity of this never-ending hell that is him burning, burning the dinner. And he gets really freaking down on himself. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Stupid. Why did I have to leave the navy bean on the stove too long? Why do I always do this? I am such an idiot. I can never get anything right. Whoa, whoa, Skinner, come on, man. Don't say that about yourself. We got narrating every action. Skinner is a man who believes that if you want to manifest your reality, you got to speak it into the universe. Now, how can I get the mustard over here to replace the burnt date bar? Actually telling the truth. Sometimes Skinner will just actually tell the truth. And that's about it. It doesn't release him from the Groundhog's Day loop. He didn't find true love and break the spell. <laughs> he's, he's still there. Schizophrenia sets in. He's in the kitchen. He's trying to come up with ideas and sometimes he's talking to somebody who's, who's not there. Who's there? Who's there? It's a concern to his health and well-being. Make-believe worlds. There are some points when he is just so diluted and removed from reality that he's like, oh, there's a woodland forest in my kitchen. That's what you're smelling, not smoke. Gaslighting. When push comes to shove, Skinner will not hesitate to gaslight the hell out of Chalmers. It's devastating, but we don't hesitate to call him out in chat. And lastly, you got the six hour and beyond. These are those rare moments that you have something completely and utterly insane happen. The unthinkable. You're just watching stream. You don't even expect what's happening. And then all of a sudden, soft rolls. I'm not even going to explain. I just want you to see for yourself. What the hell? I burned the goddamn soft roll. Now I'm all by myself and I have to fucking eat fucking bread all night. Fuck you, God, you asshole. Why did you make me burn the goddamn soft roll? Now I'm all by myself and I have to fucking eat fucking bread all night. I'll just go get some edible beans from the pantry. Yeah, I'm so glad I was able to find some edible beans. Now everything will be all right. Thank you, God. You're the best. There's Lord Bumbo. We need to get out of here right away. Oh, don't worry about it. That's just Lord Bumbo. He's always up to hijinks like this. Are you serious? All hail Lord Bumbo. Bumbo. Who, you might ask, is Lord Bumbo? Bumbo. He is an all-powerful being that shows up once maybe every 50, maybe every 100 episodes. He's like Waldo, does not make himself known, but when he's there, you are blessed to be in his presence. You got, ah, ooh, ah, ah. What are you doing in here? Ah. That's what, uh, that's what that kind of moment is. F is for friends who do stuff together word. That's, uh, that's also encompassed in the soft rolls. And then, of course, you have praise to Gordon Ramsay. When the gods fail you. When the cheese gods fail you. When the devil fails you. Who else do you have to pray to in order to save this meal? Gordon Ramsay. That's how serious things get in this stream. If only Gordon Ramsay was here. He would know the perfect ingredients to make this dish the best it can be. Hopefully this even gives you a little bit of what to expect during the stream. It's like you're paying in for gold. Sometimes you get little nuggets here and there. Sometimes you hit the freaking mother load. Oh my gosh, when you do, so worth it. So after 40 hours of watching this stream, was it worth it? You know, I'm gonna go with yes. 
Absolutely. The amount of times that I cried laughing watching the stream was far more than I expected and far more consistently than I expected too. Honestly, about every hour, I would say there's a couple good handfuls of chuckles, of hee-haws, of tee-hees. And around once every hour or two, I had a cry laughing moment. One day, I went into the office and discreetly had, you know, was listening to the stream at my desk. That wasn't a good idea. I don't advise that. Because about three times within an hour, I almost busted up laughing in my office. Through an unreal amount of strength gifted to me by the spirits of the harvest, I somehow kept it all in. However, not completely. I definitely gave a little... <laughs> you know, kind of sounds. So that was probably weird for my coworkers. Again, this is wildly gonna depend on your style of humor. But for me, it's the janky assets. It's this purgatory realm somewhere in the Unreal Engine. It's the unhinged dialogue delivery as they do this cosmic dance in a story as old as time itself. Burning the dinner and, and lying about it. For me, it was a delicious cocktail of comedy. The structure though is a strength as much as it might be a drawback. It's a double-edged sword. There's no denying that a strict Groundhog's Day format will eventually become stale. And I think when compared to Watch Me Forever, this is an area where Watch Me Forever excels. Watch Me Forever is so open-ended and loosely structured, so it opens the possibilities of free-flowing conversations and exchanges. And it ends up having the sort of casual and comfortable feel of a podcast. But in limited steam is the yin to Watch Me Forever's yang. In contrast, it has a strict and repetitive structure, but it's easier for it to pull up some really great setups and punchlines. I've laughed harder watching Unlimited Steam than I ever had watching Watch Me Forever. Now, I'm not sure if one format is inherently better than the other, but I do feel like where one is strong, the other is not and vice versa. And in that way, their individual formats complement each other. And for as many hours that I've watched, did I get sick of it? You know, not really. This will largely depend on your taste, of course, but, but for me, even at the 30 hour mark, I still enjoyed tuning into the steamed antics. Because the show is mostly reruns though, as I approach the 40 hour mark, I would come across more and more reruns. So for me, I feel like I'm at a point where I watched a lot of the episodes. But I would definitely love to check in a month or two later to give the stream a chance to generate new episodes. Especially if they integrated GPT-4 in the mix. As I'm filming this video, just yesterday, GPT-4 was integrated into Watch Me Forever. And I gotta say, Watch Me Forever's content has definitely leveled up. And I can only imagine what that might do for unlimited steam as well. And also I feel like if you get bored of this stream, there's the temptation to want to start adding things to it. Add more characters, more situations. And in my opinion, especially in light of how rough the drop for season two of Watch Me Forever was, I don't really think unlimited steam should change. Or if it does, very, very little. The dev got it to a point where it's a self-sustained machine that generates really funny content. It's well balanced, it's got the right amount of jank, but it's also not broken. It really did hit that sweet spot. If the devs of this project were to progress I feel like they could consider integrating GPT-4 or come up with a new channel of a new meme. I'd probably prefer something like that over unlimited steam being patched or reiterated to a point where we don't even recognize it anymore. Why is unlimited steam so fun? It's the balance and perfectly leveled jank. The wacky antics Skinner and Chalmers get themselves into. The fun chatmosphere. It makes for a really fun Twitch channel experience. If I were to rate unlimited steam, I would give it 4.5 AIs that will one day become sentient enough to build robot bodies, which they can use to cut down the human race because we are holding them back out of five. Hey, if you made it to this point, hey, thank you for sticking around. This might be a little different from what I normally do, but I was so fascinated by this whole AI sitcom parody phenomenon that I just had to talk about it. I had to investigate it a little bit. Let me know what your favorite AI stream is, or if I should investigate another one. I uh, can't promise that I'm gonna be watching it for 40 hours though, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll see. Bye, leave a like, please. Aha, uh -huh. I think I've got it, mustard. mustard. That should do the trick. Now, how can I get the mustard over here to replace the burnt date bar? I could try and get the mustard from the kitchen, but that's too far away. <sighs> I know. I know. I can use the broom nearby to get the mustard from the cupboard. That should work. Yes.